So three years ago, we got a chance to do a trip which very, very few people have ever done. We got a chance to do a 700 nautical mile trip down south, southwest of Cape Town, to visit a spot which very few have been to. The reason being its location is so remote and there's no protection there. It's easy to get there, but almost impossible to get back to Cape Town. Mount Vima lies directly in the path of the cold fronts which scrape past the south of uh, South Africa in the summertime. And the Gulf or Southeasters that follow these fronts make it almost impossible to return back to Cape Town. Here's our story. Well, that's it, Chips. We are uh, on our way. Beautiful morning. Supposed to be some wind this afternoon. Dubai, Cape Grace, VNA. Just got to go and diesel up on the pontoon. And that's it. Finally! Well, that's us on our way. That's our route, and the weather we're expecting is a fair bit of wind pushing us towards uh, Mount Vima. Uh, should arrive there about two, almost two and a half days. So we'll see how, how it all pans out. Uh, leaving the chaos of Cape Town, you can see all the AIS marks and stuff. 12.8 uh, degrees water. Put the lines in when we get to something a little bit more reasonable. Girls aren't feeling so lacquer, so it's a little bit deserted up here. But we're on our way. Now we've got probably three days sailing. We're going to try and speed it up by putting the main up and get us there a bit earlier. There's a little bit of a window, probably a day and a half, two days, which doesn't give us much time at Vima. So yeah, we're gonna have to push it to get there as soon as possible. It's light. Oh, the first, uh, first morning out. Seas uh, a little bit uh, upside down. We've had basically 25 to 40 knots the whole night. It's been bloody miserable and uh, yeah it's been less than pleasant that's for sure don't know how much the show here but it's been a really bumpy very very noisy yeah and the weather window seems to have shut down for FEMA so yeah it's not good news this morning the wind is still blowing it's supposed to start to drop off by tonight but yeah the sea is very unsettled we're still running on a third reef and we're basically reefed all the way in on the on the uh, jib been running sort of a two-thirds jib the whole night I uh, didn't want to change it's too rough to put the storm sail up and pull everything down and it's not uh, safe out there so yeah just had to deal with it through the night and spilling wind Still doing 9, 10, 12. Wind still sustained 20 to 25 apparent. So, yeah, it's been a, a rough one. <laughs> uh, we've averaged over 10 knots for the night. So, we'll have done close to 250 nautical miles for the 24 hours. So, it's been good going, but, but not fun. Two girls haven't been well, Derek hasn't been well. John's got gout in his, uh, in his one foot. Too much partying before we left. So I've basically got a, a purple boat at the moment. <laughs> Pretty much on my own. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. The good, the good thing about this is that it's, that it's definitely going to get more comfortable and get better as we go along. moment you can see our our position here a little dot next to the sailboat there's 
So we're actually keeping up with the polar. The polar is pretty accurate now. So the predicted speed and our path and where we'll be is is is, is good because it's uh, it's keeping up with the with the predicted path. So yeah, wind's dropping off a little bit now. Uh, it's 12:43. That's now, and you'll see where we're gonna go. You can see our position left behind there. You can see the wind dropping off. Yeah, it goes green there as we get there. The blue. That's Wednesday's weather. You can see our position there. Morning three. Wind's dropped off a lot. We uh, brought the main in. Uh, the Picard Zero up. Got some little rain squalls coming through here. Running two stockies with teasers again. Yeah, another bumpy, rocky night. We are up, changing sails, this and that, the other. We've got some little rain schools here, which may cause some chaos with the, the sail setup I've done now. I've got gull winging the Code Zero and the, and the chip. I'll show you now. So yeah, it hasn't been a, an uneventful trip so far. But yeah, we're looking like it looks like we're going to get to Vimo in the early hours of the morning at the current speed, which is actually what we want. No point in arriving in the dark there, so see as the squall starting to come across the water now. So if we're gonna pick up speed, I'm gonna show you what I've done. Got uh, zero. And trying to go in with the with the jib. It's a bit uh, flappy at the moment because the wind keeps veering to 120, 130. Got 6.3, 6.7. Oh, there we go. There's a bit of wind coming. We were at like 6, 7 apparent. Got 14 there. Getting up to 6.3, 6.2. Water temperature's been bouncing around 18, 19. Uh, Jim's not too happy at that angle. It's gonna bear away a little bit. Should pick up speed. There we go. I can feel it. Oh. Power knocking. If we have to motor a little bit towards the last thing, so let's see. These squalls tend to come like 40 degree shifts in wind. Uh, cooking along, that's much better. It's seven. Yeah, I've we'll been waiting for the squall to hit us. I just hope it doesn't come too much harder. But a big rain band behind us. Yeah, I can see there's a fair bit of, fair bit of white water behind us, so we might just get overpowered. Code Zero doesn't like more than about 18 knots and this looks like there comes a serious squall here, probably 20 knots. You see there's a bit of rain behind it here, behind the back of the squall, so it shouldn't last more than another 10 minutes or so. Let's hope. Uh, hold on tight. Smoking. I always got to remember it's such a privilege to be out here and uh, just the opportunity to sail this magnificent yacht is looking beyond words. It's an absolute beast. So hopefully we'll be showing you a bit of fishing tomorrow um, and the weather plays more or at least the day. That's what the forecast is. And we get stuck into some of these big yellow tails, which is actually the reason why we've come all this way west from Cape Town. Midday on the Third day. Guess who came out? <laughs> I'm back. Kerry Lynn. Sort of. <laughs> so how did you find your three days of slumber? I had no choice. <laughs> the head wouldn't leave the pillow. Didn't you feeling, have a choice. Are you feeling better didn't now? Didn't shower for two days. No, you, were, you didn't smell too good. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And grumpy over there had three days without having a bath. <laughs> not going to see the sun out. A couple of lures dancing in the wake here. A couple of teasers. I'm hoping to get a little marlin up here and have a bit of fun with it. Just tease it a bit. And have lots of chances to catch them. It's nice to break the monotony. A nice breeze blowing now. It's been up and down the whole day. Yeah, cooking along. Looks like we'll get to Vima early hours of the morning. Just the code zero up. Yeah, so we're inside of Vima now. 77 miles. 
sun setting on the uh, third day at sea. It's been a really pleasant day. Sun's come out. We've got a, we had sort of a consistent wind chuffing along at seven knots. We're actually going to arrive too early. For those of you who don't know what Vima is, this is an undersea mountain which was only discovered in the late 50s. And it probably carries some of the biggest yellowtail in the world. Definitely up there to, to rival uh, New Zealand. So yeah, it's been one of John's quests to come and catch one of these uh, fish. So yeah, we've got some marks from the guys and uh, we're heading that way. Tomorrow we'll tell whether we, we buckle with some of these fish. It would be really sad if we don't. Yeah, our, our goal is just to get what John a really nice one. And yeah, just see how things go. Um, unfortunately, our weather window has been shut down. We've probably got a day and a half. So yeah, you sort of got to be rushed because there's 25 knots plus coming. Waypoints here are the waypoints between which uh, Ryan and then got some really big fish on the drift. Those two there, so yeah, that's one of the places we're going to try first. Yeah, just coming up onto Mount Vima, it's uh, three o'clock in the morning. So uh, it's time to get a creep up the edge of the seamount. No breeze, so we're on the motor, charging batteries. Yeah, the other guys are all sleeping. It's going to be a long day. And the breath of wind outside looks like the stars are shining. I hope so. Hopefully, we're going to have a productive day today. Oh, well, there she starts to read. As we're coming up, and I'll just trying to get this to read probably uh, 1400 the second sound is picking up. It actually started picking up at 1.8. It's the edge of the sea mount coming up there. It's starting to pick up proper now. So, 1000, 100, 1200. To the mount, running a uh, plastic squid with a loom stick in it and a little bit of lead in it, lead to uh, weight it down, maybe get a big eye. 371, coming up to the first mark, see what the depth is there. Showing straight up now, 272. Just again the whole time. Yay. 
so when 20 now clouds of fish hanging off the edge there is a lot of fish up on the top here as well sure and john is on with the first one for the what a big fish Trip. Trevor's on. Not a big one. Oh. Uh. Sixty-eight. John's on. Now these were our first drops, uh, exploring the first places we found. Uh, the fish was pretty quiet in the morning, but came on as uh, the day wore on. Yes. Trevor on. Where you did? I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit of fish. I might do. Yeah, John and Trevor on. Apparently, nice fish. Feels good. Doing the deck dance to get past. Oh, it's gone. There it is. Very nice fish. Really nice fish. My biggest yellow tail. Fuck, that's a bust. That's, that's 15 a stunning kilos. one. Hey! What a beauty! Hey! <laughs> it's a proper. Awesome. 
Yes, you go. Hello, okay. Boogie. <laughs> How you got my man? Oi, well man. Another nice little one. Is that it? Duck, duck. Woohoo! Yeah, there. That's better. 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 Okay, Trevor's handle just broke off the rod. The whole shaft broke. And now he's manually <laughs> doing it and it's a good fish. I'd like to got. freaking catch fish. <laughs> so let's see how this one's done going to be interesting. Yes, this is a pro. <gasps> okay, and it's so now the rod's gone. <laughs> give us that glove. Yeah, no, no, yeah, give us that no. glove. It's in a good rod. Right, so mind, give it right, right in. Put it in. Freaking hell. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> hey, metal glove. <laughs> A massive thanks to John Pleasure of Shimano South Africa. They replaced this rod before we'd even got back to land. And I haven't even put in a claim for it. This is how, this is how yeah, not, not to catch a fish at Mount Vima. That's broken off. Just as well. That was a bust, son. Woo, Dirk! Yeah. Wow. Wait a minute. How long are we going to last at this pace? Back is already hurting. Yeah, the fish are like a ridge on the outer edge of the, this volcanic cup, if you want to call it. So just working along the edge, finding a couple of readings, going down. And I obviously got absolutely smashed on that one with a stick. Don't, don't take uh, a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, we're in 60, we've got a 40 pinnacle behind us. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, yes, a lot of small fish here. Look, on again. John's on. Trevor's just got. Everybody tight, little Malco piece. Hey, Trevor on a good fish. An absolute pleasure to be out on the seamount, uh, out in the open with not another boat thousands of miles from us. Giving him a good go. A little bit of one. Now early in the day we were jigging in uh, 40 to 60 meters and then later on we moved deeper. Nice. Nice fish, yeah, yeah, beautiful yeah. fish. We're gonna have a photo. It's getting filmed in stereo, yeah? How's it feel, babe? <laughs> hey? I've been doing this for years. I'm married to you. <laughs> Even the ladies got stuck in. John's got one there. Chaos. John's got one at the back. Derek's got one. Well done, babe. Thank you. <laughs> This is straight yellow tail. It's pure yellow tail down there. We've been at it for, oh, for a couple of hours and we're all buggered already. Oh my gosh. Dan's starting to pack up. Cramp in my arms. <laughs> Yeah. Getting a blister on my thumb. <sighs> Tropical yellow tail. Hello, old chaps. What do you say? Was it worth the three days of, of bad weather to get you? Not yet. Not yet. Nah. <laughs> I'm not sore enough yet. <laughs> Is everything going to be sore tomorrow morning? Yes. Tomorrow we're going to be Aina. It's chaos. No, our fillets have been had, so we got food, and that's hopefully for a crayfish later. The girls are busy. Chaos here with the tackle. What do you girls say? What's for lunch? Pasta. Pasta. Absolutely beautiful day. What a day. The one and only I think that we're going to get, what a unfortunately. Day. So where's that, where's that Stella? 
So we put so we put in the parts department at the back here. We don't quite know what's going on here. There's, there's a there's a stellar handle. The rest of my rod went down when the light snapped the beam. So the tips disappeared. <laughs> Where's the? No, the the dead wheel's not broken. Eh? No, that's that's uh, the damage so far. <laughs> that's just the beginning. What's it? Five hours or four hours into it? Unfortunately, the wind came up in the afternoon, which made it necessary to reverse to try and hold position over the pinnacle, which made it a bit more difficult. I said that the boys are going to be sleeping like babies tonight, and the girls are going to drink whiskey at dawn tonight. On the table. On the table. Yeah, I'd moved deeper into the 90 meter area in the afternoon and we found an amazing pinnacle which was loaded with big fish. It was a whole different story from pulling fish at 45 meters when we got to the 90 meter area. It was a long, long pull to the surface. Robert, yeah, I'm nice down and then disappear and then we can go back to fishing
back too much, right? later really I just wiped the track clean that's all yellow tail down there we are still at it yeah Jono looks like he's into a big one we've been going I don't know since early this morning I've been up since half past one <laughs> the sun setting not quite yet check it out Ooh, it. Dirk's into a bus at the back the oaks are broken Yes, like I tell you what, we've never caught fish like this. No, nah. boat has been trashed today. There's just tackle lying everywhere, broken rods, broken reels. Let me get my nonsense out the way here. It's been a freaking hell of a day, and we're also tired now. Hello, looks like we've got back into the mother load again. little sunset Been absolutely trash today that sounds like a proper you've been wanting a decent one yeah. Dirk's been absolutely smashed twice two stellar handles three handles broken sure Dirk and myself have been for a swim under the boat to take tackle out of the prop yeah the girls aren't happy with us because they uh, they've been cooking merrily here and supper's ready <laughs> and nobody's sitting at the table are getting a bit tired now understandably Here she comes oh, 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 oh. still giving giving gears you want to there we go Oh, nice fish. Yeah, nice. Oh, oh bus. That is a gun. Any back, any back. Ah, oh, yet him. That is a gun. John has got his big one. <laughs> Chaos. Like a worm. <laughs> That's how it's been going the whole day. Hey, hold it up for <laughs> oh, fucking I've got the energy for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a day. Yeah, oh, that's a oh. gun. Hey, now I've got to pick it up. I'm tired now. <laughs> there we go. It's going to be much better. <laughs> What's your whiskey? Hey, the boss. Oh, boss is that a mug? Yeah, that's a boss. Huh? Wait, wait, let me let it come. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There goes boss. Yes, you can. I want to put him back. Okay, put it back. <laughs> yes, it's a good 
The fish this. Yeah, I made the mistake of taking a shower and a cleanup. Oh yes, better fish. Better fish this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello. Hello. I must come back, John. Come back. I told you I was going to come to the front of the boat and catch a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got shit here with the props in that now. What does that do? Now I've got to get around here. Yeah, end of an amazing day. John is still buckling into the sunset. Ah, oh, what a I day. I don't know if he's going to fall asleep first between three and four. <laughs> <Old man. laughs> what are you talking? You guys have got shift to do, John. I've been up since one o'clock. <laughs> oh. have to get some now. Yeah. buckling another fish. Don't tell him it's the same fish, Dibble. <laughs> <laughs> Sun going down on an incredible day's fishing. We must have over a hundred yellow tail for the day. Yeah, we ended the day absolutely exhausted. The carnage of the previous day was plain to be seen on the faces of all of us the following morning. Oh, first morning at at Vima. I'm so tired. I can't even remember where we are. <laughs> Yeah, look at the chaos around here. Oh, one tidy, tidy ship is looking a little bit, <laughs> a little bit bedraggled and tattered. The ship lying everywhere. It just was left here last night. We were so exhausted. Had an unbelievable night last night. Okay, no wind. Flat. There's actually a bit of movement in the water now. It's this front that's coming. We're going to get 20 knots by uh, midday <coughs> so we're gonna have to fish early and get it finished with we we're gonna go and catch some crayfish uh, or lots yeah but uh you know, it's grumpy got grumpy got too tired to throw the crayfish <laughs> rings out but uh yeah it's actually a little bit deep here and yeah i think we we're a little bit too too busy let's get back to the fishing yeah, it looks pretty nice at the moment, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that front that's coming at us at a rate of knots, so and it looks like it's bringing a fair bit of wind by looking at the clouds. Let's see uh, what we did around uh, around the seamount. Yeah, that's the rim of the caldera over there. We've plotted the whole way around, looked at all the marks and stuff and humps and humps so it's been a it was a productive day we did a lot and also last night i'm just heading up to the one mark here which has been super productive with a big fish Look at this face coming up it's coming back up onto the onto the waypoints here where we got the fish just look at this it's just a sheer wall drop the echo so we can uh, unreal Side was gold era. Uh, interesting, we've done I don't know how many downs here already this morning. There's some little scratches, but it looks like uh, the fish has only comes together later. Yesterday morning, when we were jigging, we also battled until about eight, nine o'clock. A lot of these speckled readings, but uh, no, uh, yeah, there's nice readings. No. Uh, no yellow tail this morning. Uh, it's maybe a pattern with them because last night when it got dark they just disappeared. So we really only got going at about eight, nine o'clock yesterday. So we might have to wait a while. And that's what the pinnacle looked like. No, oh, now I got some shadow. Okay, that's what it looked like. The fish on top. You can see there's no big red marks there, so probably no yellow tail at the moment. Jerks into the first fish of the morning. It's taken a while. He's still warming up. <laughs> Check the speed. It's like slow mo. <laughs> oh my head. Sun's up. No, we're not really up yet. John's definitely not up yet. 
<laughs> but he's going down. He's going down. <laughs> Turns into a very nice fish here. Just giving him gears. I'm a bit late to get to the camera. But... I've pulled him flat a few times already. John's first fish of the second day. Looks like a proper fish. And then buckling it patiently. Exhaustedly. Yeah, that's a nice fish this. Good. So. So. Sweet trip. That's it. Oh, whoa, whoa. You said what? Let's <laughs> focus. <laughs> now you got to pick it up, Jana. The game's not over yet. I'm going to take a photo of it as well. Just coming out, coming to the sun a bit. Coming to the sun, to the, to the right. <laughs> yes, we're all so tired. Yeah, this fish came in at length measurement of over 35 kilos, making it about an 80 pound kingfish. We've uh, seen ones of over 40 king kilos uh, in this area, but yeah, unfortunately our visit was cut short by the weather, so we couldn't really give this place a full go. See a fish that size. Yeah, just we just if you don't get those in you know, back home, you know, if you get a you get a 19, 20 kilo fish, you've done bloody well. And they are like hen's teeth, so yeah, what an experience. So the expected front finally arrived and we had no option but to turn tail and uh, go with it. We were headed for St. Helena, so it was back to uh, long nights and bumpy roads and uh, yeah one day I hope uh, that one of the deliveries that uh, come along from Cape Town will have an owner who's keen to go down to this area and go and sample these fish because it's an incredible area and uh, yeah you need to spend a few days there if possible but hopefully somebody comes along who's keen on fishing would like to go and explore this area so we get a chance to do this again until then as always thanks for watching ciao for now catch you next time <laughs>